Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam shows you some more terminal stuff. Yikes, I thought we left this terminal crap behind us. Why does he keep coming back to this terminal thing? Okay, so <clears throat> let's get started today. Uh, today's going to be just going over some basic commands. It's just going to be the CP command and the MV command in your terminal. Now, uh, I know you may not uh, exactly like the terminal, but um, I just wanted to go over this video uh, just to show you, uh, had I known this uh, before I started using Linux, this would have saved me probably three or four hours worth of work. And I'll explain like a little war story uh, as we continue through this video. So everyone knows if you uh, actually, by the way, I'm just doing this in the awesome Windows Manager. So uh, at this point, um, if you're using Ubuntu 12.04 in the Unity desktop environment, um, you should know how to open up your home folder and you should also know how to get to your terminal. If you don't, uh, go back to an older video. Okay, so let's get started. So this is uh, my home folder uh, and I'm just using the Nautilus uh, file manager. So in my home folder, I created this folder called TMP, just stands for temporary. You can call it test, demo, whatever you want. Uh, and inside this folder, I have a text file called test, and you can create a, a, a text file yourself. And then just open it up with a text editor. You can use uh, gedit. Uh, I'm just going to use mousepad for this example. And uh, you can see I just have some arbitrary text in here, okay? Now, if we wanted to make a copy or a backup of this particular file, everyone probably knows how to do this with the graphical user interface, right? It's real easy. You can just hit Control C, Control V on your keyboard, and a copy is created. Or you can also right click, say copy, right click again, say paste, and then we have two working copies of the exact same file. Uh, usually I just clean this up and I would rename this something like test.txt.bak. You could call it original, uh, whatever you wanted to call it. But the bottom line is now we have two copies of the exact same file. So now if I go back to the uh, the original file and I open that up, then uh, like let's say I type in some more text, more text, blah, blah, blah. I save it and then I close that. And then I am like, oh crap, I did not mean to add that in there. I just messed up this file. This is great for config files uh, to create backups. Because if you mess something up, now I could just revert back to this snapshot that I took, right? So we can uh, delete this out, we can rename this, and we are right back to where we started. So you're probably wondering yourself, why in the world am I even showing you this? This is probably super, super obvious. Well, when I was first starting to learn Linux, people would tell me to back up special configuration files before I modify them. But they would tell me to do this through the terminal. And that was pretty easy to do. I'll show you how to do that. And lo and behold, I accidentally messed up a very important configuration file. I had a backup. But uh, I guess it was common knowledge within the community how to restore this file through a terminal, which I had no idea how to do. So what ended up happening is I actually reinstalled the Linux operating system because I had no idea what I was doing. And honestly, it was a two second fix uh, had I known this information. So that's my goal is to show this information. And uh, the first step is just to sort of show you what you're used to with the graphical user interface. So how do we accomplish these same goals with a terminal? So it doesn't matter what desktop environment you're in, uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get to a terminal. So I just opened up my terminal over here. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do, because um, I'm working, actually, I'll show you the graphical user interface as we as we go through this. Um, what I'm going to do is I, uh, I'm i going to say uh, PWD just for print and working directory so that way I know where I am. I'm in my home folder. If I hit the ls command, this will list everything in that folder. Uh, I've done this uh, in previous videos, so just watch those if you're confused already. And then I am going to change the directory to my TMP folder. So now if I list this out, you can see my test.txt file. Okay, so uh, if you want more information, you can hit man cp, and this will tell you all about the uh, copy command and all the options available to you. I'm not going to go through that. You can read that at your own time, so I'm going to quit that. So what we need to do is we just need to copy this test.txt file. So uh, the first step is to invoke the copy command cp, and then we are going to say which file we want to copy. Now, this is pretty easy. I only have one file, so it's pretty obvious. But uh, in this example, I am going to copy the TST text file. 
And then you have to say where you want to copy it to. So at this point, I'm just going to make a backup in this same folder. If I wanted to change the folder, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll go through this in, the, in two steps. So the first one is I'm just going to keep a copy in this folder. So all I have to do is create a space and then just say, you can name this whatever you want. BAK, hit enter, and you can see it immediately updated. Uh, and if you want to see the list of the terminal, I hit list, and then you can see I have two folders. So immediately, that is how you create a copy uh, within the same folder. Okay, so now let's say uh, I'm, I'm in my actual home folder. I'm one folder above the uh, temp folder that I was in. So let's say I wanted to create a backup file in a different folder. So let's say I just want to do one above the temporary folder of what I was working. Now, I am just going to invoke the exact same uh, command here. And then what I am going to do is uh, now I just type out the path. So it's going to be backslash home, backslash ab, backslash test.txt.bak. And uh, now when I hit enter, um, you will see the test dot uh, txt dot bak file was just created so basically it's going to be the copy what you want to copy and then the path you want to place it in now let's say you didn't want to change into the working directory like right now I am in the working directory of temp so if I use this the graphical I am actually my terminal is in this location uh, where my uh, home folder or where my nautilus uh, file manager is right they're both in the identical location if you wanted to you could also copy without going into that without using the change uh, directory command uh, all you would have to do is you would just have to type out the entire path so it would look something like this it would be copy slash home slash ab slash um, temp slash text and then you could also invoke home slash ab slash that and then just call it uh, new so now I just created a new txt file so exact same thing just uh, different ways to do it okay so now I'm going to show you how to restore this file using the command line so I'm just going to open this up real quick with my text editor okay so you can see the text I have in there this is a test only I'm placing text so I'm going to close that. So just remember that, the original file. And then I'm going to open this up with a text editor. And then let's say this is a configuration file. Just pretend with me for a moment. And let's say um, I add more text, command, blah, 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 and then evoke this, blah, 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 blah. And then I save it. I close out. And then I realize, oh, crap. I should not have done that. I just messed up my configuration file. Uh, I need to restore my backup. So what we're going to do now is it's called the MV command or move command. And if you want, you can, of course, man that and you can read on it. Uh, it works very similar to the CP command, um, so it's pretty easy to use. So what we need to do is we need to invoke the MV and then we need to say what file we want to um, move so in this case it's going to be our uh, BAK file right so we want to take that and then copy that into another file and in this case I'm going to copy this back to the TXT file now when you do this this file, this backup file, is now going to overwrite this file. So just be careful when you're using this command that you actually want to do that. You're not going to get any warnings that it's going to overwrite. It's just going to do that. So uh, notice over here I have 117 bytes. So when I click Enter, it is going to immediately update. It is going to get rid of the backup file, and basically it just restores everything. Now obviously when I open this back up, it is going to be the exact same te uh, text that we had originally because that's what I restored. So now I just reverted back everything to uh, where I first started with all of this. So if you did not want to copy that uh, backup file and basically restore like I did because um, the disadvantage to doing the move command is that it basically wiped this out. It basically it took this file and just converted it into this file uh, which got rid of your backup file. So if 
you don't want to like if you still if you want to revert back to your original file but still keep this backup file then what you're going to do is you are just going to do the exact same thing but instead of using the move command you can just use the copy command now again this is this this backup file is going to overwrite this text this test txt file so just make sure that you actually want to do that so when i click enter you can see that it immediately updated and i restored back to my original file but in this particular instance i did not get rid of my backup file so uh, use these as you want and one last command i will show you in case you just want to clean stuff up uh, is the rm command or remove so again you can man that out and uh, read all about that if you want uh, but uh, the way this works is just be very very careful with this command because Usually when you delete a file with the graphical user interface, it'll send it to the trash can. So you can always go back to your trash and restore a file later uh, if you accidentally deleted something you don't. With this command, uh, it wipes it out. It is gone completely. It does not send it to the trash can. So just be very careful when you're invoking this command that you actually want to do this. But um, this would... This is how you would clean up a file. You would just do rm, and then you would just say the, uh, I just want to delete out my backup file for whatever reason. Uh, you hit enter, and it immediately deletes that out. Again, this does not send it to the trash can. All right, so let me show you what happened to me. Maybe this will save you some headaches. So I'm going to navigate to this folder, etc x11. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can just make sure that you don't delete any files in here. Uh, as long as you don't invoke uh, super user do, you should only have read access to all of these files, which is good because you can really mess up your system. So um, there's this file called xorg config right here. Uh, let me actually open this up with a text editor. So basically what ended up happening is um, I wanted to get dual screens working. And what ended up happening is uh, I couldn't get it to work through a graphical user interface, so I went on this form and they said, oh, well, just uh, add these, um, uh, just add this text to this particular file, and then once you restart, everything should work uh, the way you want it. So it's like, okay, but it said, warning, make a backup of this XOR config file. So I made a backup. In fact, you can see uh, uh, I've made several backups of this file since then, but uh, I made a backup of this file and they said if things go awry then just restore this file so uh, i thought everything was going smoothly i added the text i restarted the linux operating system and then my uh, x11 server uh, basically uh, couldn't start because i messed something up in this text file so what ended up happening is it immediately uh, basically i did not have a graphical user interface it just dropped me to a terminal only uh, the bad thing is I did not know how to restore this file. I never read up on actually how to restore the file. So here I was in the terminal. I didn't know any of these commands. I knew I had a backup, but I did not know how to restore the backup. And uh, apparently this is just common knowledge within the Linux community. And uh, I uh, basically reinstalled Linux because I thought that was the best solution. Had I known this command, all I would have had to do was just back up this or restore this backup and immediately restart Linux and everything would have been back to normal. At least I would have had a graphical user interface. So uh, this is the purpose of that video. Okay, and I'm going to quickly show you what something would look like if, for example, your X11 server doesn't start. Um, so I'm just going to enter recovery mode. Okay, essentially, when my X11 server, when I messed up that config file, this is basically what I saw. I was just uh, in this terminal type thing. But as you can see, I basically have all of my terminal commands. So uh, all I would have had to do was just simply copy that. Uh, basically, I would just change directory to that particular folder. Now, this isn't going to have it. I'm basically in VirtualBox, so I can give you the screencast to show you all this. But uh, essentially, um, uh, if this file existed, um, all I would have had to do was either use the copy command or the move command that I just showed you, and I could have restored that file, restarted, and boom, I would have been right back to where I started. So again, you can mostly do everything in the graphical user interface, but the terminal is excellent for troubleshooting any small little glitches that you may run into. And when people tell you how to back up uh, a file you use the copy command and if you want to restore it you can either use the copy command again to restore it or you can use the move command well as always i hope you found this video helpful uh, be sure to check out my website greenhornlinux.com thanks for watching